Right now we're talking to Dr. Robert Malone, and um, I, I want to play this audio of the bioethicist um, for you, doctor, so you can hear what he's talking about, inserting and, and making us repel um, meat. Listen to this. So I'll give two examples. So one is that uh, people eat too much meat, right? And if they were to cut down on their consumption of meat, then they would, uh, it would actually really help the planet. Uh, but people are not willing to give up meat. Yeah, you know, some people will be willing to, but other people, they may be willing to, but they sort of, they have a weakness of will. They say, wow, this, this steak is just too juicy. I can't do it. I, I'm one of those, by the way. So, you know, but so here's the thought, right? So it turns out that we know a lot about, so there, we have these, intolerance to, uh, so I, for example, I have milk intolerance. I'm, uh, and there, some people are intolerant to crayfish. So possibly we can use hu human engineering to make it the case that we're intolerant to certain kinds of meat, to certain kinds of bovine, uh, bovine proteins. And there's actually analogs of this in life. There's this thing called the long star tick, where if it bites you, you will become allergic to meat. Uh, I can sort of describe the mechanism. So that's something that we can do through human engineering. We can kind of uh, ad possibly address really big world problems through human engineering. Isn't that, Whoa. shouldn't that be terrifying? Okay, that, that's a mic drop moment. Yeah, that, that's clearly crossing the line. Engineering humans is the key. You didn't mention that part before. So, so he's talking about engineering you and me, um, not engineering the cow. Uh, that's that's way Correct. over the top. I, I was going to say, um, well, well, I think the core of what you're talking about is uh, does the rights of the society trump the rights of the individual, right? Do the ends justify the means? And we already settled that. We had the Nuremberg trials, right? We said no. <laughs> and here in the States, and I think all of your listeners can, and are aligned with me on this, we're a free society of free people that have free will to make their own decisions. And uh, this, this, I, I, I hope that the speaker was saying this in jest, just to illustrate a point, because he, the idea of engineering humans, uh, number one, it's, it's naive. As somebody who's been in the gene therapy space for a long time, we can talk about these fancy ideas, but implementing them turns out to be wicked hard for the very reason we started talking about that, you know, there are all kinds of barriers to getting stuff into our DNA. It's hard to do. What concerns me is it, it feels like uh, some scientists are now like, yeah, yeah, eugenics didn't work, but the idea was good. And we're just going down the same road with new technology uh, from, you know, 1900 yeah. to 1940. Yeah, no, and this is, I suspect this is always going to be the case. I can tell you that in, in this, in, among my peers, there are always those who feel like if we can do it, we should do it. And, and it's often real hard to check those people. I mean, this gets, this is the same kind of issue as the gain of function mutation research that's the, at the core of the, controversy about the origin of this virus. There are people in my space, you know, in my contact list that are kind of wired to say, um, I'm really smart. And if I can do this, I should be allowed to do it. And those people are really hard to control, um, but they're out there and they will always be out there. And somehow the rest of us got to put a clamp on them and make it clear that that's not okay. But it's not easy to do, I well, guarantee. It's <laughs> it's not easy to do, and it feels like medicine in some way is going off the rails. I know uh, the AMA just said that they're going to start now including critical race theory in medicine. And I thought that critical race theory, like it, don't like it, that's political. We cannot put political a lot of, a lot into of, medicine. So, yeah, the assumption that the American Medical Association represents most physicians in the United States is false. Uh, not not only by numbers, mm. but also by logic. So please don't paint us all with that brush. Just because a bunch of folks sitting in a ivory tower in Chicago have to say that. Um, a lot of us find the AMA has led us down the garden path to where our lives are controlled by accountants and, and people with MBAs. Right. Uh, they, they kind of sold us out. So 
you know, I don't know the medicine. You're right. Medicine today is not what I signed up for when I went into medical school. Uh, and a lot of my colleagues are really disillusioned with it. But um, and I, that's a that's a bigger we're, problem. <laughs> we're we're facing. These are the kind of things that keep me up at night. Um, we're facing times that are hap- that are coming at us so fast, and it doesn't seem like. Uh, for instance, I have a daughter who um, has uh, cerebral palsy, and she had horrible, horrible seizures. She was having them all the time, yeah. and she just had this miraculous brain surgery. She hasn't had a seizure since January. That's in th- she's thirty one or thirty two years old. That's that is a miracle. And I yeah. know that Elon Musk is developing what's called Neuralink. And his idea is that you'll be able to, you know, if you have strokes, which she had, uh, it will be able to um, jump uh, over any of the scarring or anything else. And I, I think this is fantastic. But I also see what it could become and I don't know where the line is. Does anybody <laughs> and, and is anybody talking you're, about these you're, things? You're right to be you're, you're right to be wary because the history is that when, when every one of these breakthroughs always comes with a good side and a bad side, and there's Correct. always military applications. There's always these kinds of control applications, and uh, and there's always folks that are willing to exploit it, particularly if they can make a buck. And um, I, I it's, it, this is the battle that we are going to have to wage forever. But it's, is there anybody in your keeping, business leading that battle? That's a good question. Um, is there – I'm not – there must be uh, institutes and think tanks that are – I can't imagine there isn't. But the field of bioethics seems to be often fairly – focused on on just the pragmatic parts of how do we do a clinical trial and and you know develop drugs and mm-hmm. stuff like that and and not on these big picture issues these are more psychology and social sociology kind of in in um and big think tank rand, rand institute kind of questions you're asking and I, I i hope that there are folks out there but they're not in my world my world people tend to be pretty focused on the mission and, uh, you know, how do we protect the warfighter? How do we uh, respond to bio threats? I mean, the thing that has my world spooked is these new recombinant technologies like uh, CRISPR-Cas9 that, that, you know, in the and garage biology. You can engineer some wicked nasty stuff these days in your garage. And that's, that's in a way that you didn't used to be able to. And that's what Scott. Could you explain? Pretty smooth. most people don't don't even know what CRISPR is. Can can you explain that quickly? Not very well. I don't know it. I don't practice it. It's a new technology that allows very precise recombination, which is to say, insertion of new genetic material in place of existing uh, genetic material, and it makes it kind of child's play. It used to be really hard, and now by use of these sequences that are found in some uh, prokaryotic uh, uh, bug uh, 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 microbial systems, you're able to circumvent a lot of the old kind of more kludgy stuff and just make genetic swaps wherever you want. And that's complemented by the fact that you can, I mean, I could, I could write out a new gene that I want right now on my computer and send it off to a shop in the U.S. or China, and they would send me back a package with that gene synthesized. It's that trivial. And this is a technology oh that gosh. now allows you to take that and drop it into, you know, your favorite genome. It's not, it's not yet um, uh, so efficient that the, the problem with all of this for humans, for big, you know, animals, to get it into all of your cells, we're not there yet. We're a long, long way from that. But to do it in one cell, like, like or modify a virus or modify a bacteria, um, that's now trivial. And wow. That, that, that argument, you know, we can't, it, it changes everything because you can't track stuff in the same way. Um, and it becomes uh, pretty easy to do stuff. So that's, that's a little spooky.
right? Yeah, we are we're, we're entering a whole new world, just a whole yeah. new world. Dr. Robert Malone, thank you for spending the time uh, over the last three days being on in the My program. Pleasure.